Knockout's a result of a direct blow. It happens because of acceleration and deceleration of the brain. Uh, you get initial acceleration as you're actually hit, and then actually as the head stops spinning or moving, you get a deceleration injury as the brain comes to a halt up against the skull. When the head isn't well protected, so the position is poor, such as the person is fighting with his chin up, hasn't got his chin down, or if the head is spun rather than held straight at the time of impact, that's when you're most likely to get knocked out. If, if the blow lands on the uh, tip of the chin or, or on the cheek and gets a good rotation happening, then you're more likely to get a knockout as a result of that blow. Whereas if you hit someone on the top of the forehead as they're moving in and the chin's down, uh, it's very unlikely that, that would lead to a knockout. And that's one of the things that I'm looking for as I sit there at ringside, is how much the head moves with each blow. And I usually think there's a rule of about three or four blows after you start to see head movement in the head that the person's about to get knocked out. There's no evidence really for the concept of the glass jaw. I think some fighters do have bad technique and that leads them to be more prone to being knocked out. But it's, uh, there's many factors involved in being knocked out. Head position, strength of the neck muscles, ability to read the flow of the fight, ability to move the head back to absorb some of the damage as the blow comes at you, ability to keep your guard up, and mental discipline. Uh, some people just don't want to get knocked out, so I think willpower has something to play in this as well, and uh, desperation and determination, these all play a part.